Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charney. This rather chilly building is Christchurch Glasson in Lancashire, otherwise known as Christchurch Glasson Dock, because Glasson is, well, it's a seaside, but industrial seaside village. It, the church here was built in 1840, and then the chancel here, you can see behind me, was added in, eight, in sorry, 1932. So the original building had a smaller chancel, and it's a good example of the 1840, uh, first half of the 19th century, in term, certainly that 1830s, 1840s period, when these new churches are being built, and they're being built quickly, and they're being built cheaply. The aim here is not to build something that is incredibly impressive, rather it's to build something that can come up quickly and can be used then for worship by the people living in this industrial village as they're working, you've got a dock here, the shipbuilding, there is uh, there's goods coming across the Irish Sea being unloaded here, and there's coastal traffic being unloaded here, and there's a connection immediately with the canal system to take these goods inland. So this is very much a, an industrial and trading area. And so you need a church, of course, 1840, you think we need a church in order to have a village here. And this is the local Anglican church. Now, again, this is Lancashire. There is another church quite nearby at Thurnham. That's Roman Catholic and always was at St. Elizabeth and St. Thomas. Um, uh, not doing a video on, but this is uh, one of these Protestant churches, Anglican churches, and at that time, 1840s, Anglicanism in Lancashire is very Protestant, because if you're not very Protestant, you're a Roman Catholic. Lancashire had more Roman Catholics than anywhere else, any other county in England at that time. And most of them were recusants. They were people, in other words, whose families had been Roman Catholic. Most of them since before the, well, since the Reformation, basically. They'd stayed with the um, older religious practices and beliefs. So we'll have a look around this little building and uh, see what there is to see and point out some of the important features indicating some of the history here. So we start at the West End. I'd like to point out here the distinction of the difference between these rather rough pine benches here in the body of the church in the nave and then you've got these very fancy carved uh, choir stalls etc and of course all that is 1930s because that's when that's built um, and the, the, the chancel arch again is 1930s we've got a war memorial here on the wall um, we've got here to the glory of God in memory of John W. Nicholson, shipbuilder, glass and dock, who died 16th of March, 1919, aged 50 years. Um, this tablet was placed in Glasson Church by the shipyard employees as a testimony of their great esteem. The Nicholson family are very deeply involved in building this church because, again, they are the, the main local employers. We have here a memorial, a, a window here with... St. John, St. Paul, and the Risen Christ. And this is a memorial in memory of Matthew Henry Simpson, only son of Matthew and Maria Simpson. Um, the font has been moved here. I know it's currently got the Advent candles on, but um, it's got Advent candles on in the mid It's the middle of um, January, but there we are. Um, but that is the font. It would have been elsewhere, but it's been moved here. And then we've got this nice pulpit, and there we've got the church banner. Um, we have here this uh, rather nice pre raphaelite type window, um, Christ the Good Shepherd, and um, this is in memorial, this is a memorial or to John Piers Chamberlain Starkey. Charles Edward Golland, 37 years vicar, um, 1857 to 1926. And then if we look back, we've got the gallery with the organ in it. Now that gallery is quite deep, so I suspect it was originally not just an organ gallery, but would have been seating. But now it is basically the organ and then there's a bit of storage in there. 
Um, one thing is that galleries and health and safety. We've got a, of course, more than the area under the gallery has been um, screened off to provide a, a room, a church room, and the chancel. And in this 1930s chancel, we've got, you can see a ship, right, a bit close there, you can see the, the ship there in the window, um, of course, glass and dock. And no ship build it, well, certainly not, nothing of the sort there used to be here. Um, the east window is the Christ of the um, Revelation, and we've got the usual we've got the lamb and flag there, Agnes Dei, and there's the vestry door, and looking west we have in that gallery and the back end of the pulpit. So it's a very simple building because, of course, it has to be um, the win these windows may be original, um, I mean, that sort of triple lance that was relatively cheap. Yeah, they must be original. I can't imagine they'd put windows in behind the gallery and that gallery is going to be original because of its style. Um, also, don't, don't, the Victorians didn't like putting galleries in. They liked taking them out. But this is very much, it's the, the dockyard church. It's not uh, not the church for, it's not a posh building. It's for the, the people the, who work at the docks and their family. So their families. So that is the inside here at Glasson Dock. Also, here we are outside of Christ Church, and again, it's a very simple, um, early 19th century type building. You can see relatively low roof line. We've got a little bell bell cot there, and these lancet windows. Just early pointed, as the style is called. And one of the reasons for doing it actually is a very cheap style to build and a style you can build well, relatively cheaply. That's what the architect said. That's not, not me be denigrating it. I'm saying that you can build a, a nice-looking building like this relatively cheaply, and that's why in 1840, when this church is built, they say, well, we're going to go for this um, early pointed, as they called it, style, or early English as um, is the alternative way of describing it. So that's the outside. Have a little look around the outside, and then the usual concluding so there we are, there's the outside. You can see the obviously the nave here, that is more or less the original. There would have been a little little vestigial chancel, but that would have been all. Um, we're here, this is the canal and um, the dock. As you can see the, the masts over there. There's a little bit of a shipyard there still, but it's um, these smaller, smaller vessels being built. And um, this is where you'd have the transfer between coasting vessels and the canal barges that would take the goods to their destinations, places like Manchester, um, etc. And just to wander down here, it's quite easy to go here along the canal towpath, which is uh, how I got to the church in the first place. It's much easier to find the towpath on the road, in fact. And there's the vestry and the, where are we, <laughs> um, the end here, and you can just about see there, there's a whacking great tomb, that's going, going to be, I expect, one of the uh, shipbuilders of Glass and Dock, and there's the east end with the 1930s east end. They've tried, to some extent, to follow the early point of the triple lance at design, um, because that's what you do, it's uh, you don't want the building to be too completely weird, but it is slightly different style. And again, that's fine because historic churches do this, they grow up over time. So that's the outside, that's Christ Church, you have to go around the west end again. So here we are at the, wet, at the east end here. I was interested in whose tombs these are, and these are not to do with shipbuilding, but rather this is John Henry Dalton, Lord of the Manor of Thurnham, and uh, William Augustus Dalton. It's interesting because the Dawsons were Roman Catholics, um, and most of them are buried at Thurnham. But 1937, 1965, so um, I suspect that's the period when, certainly when the uh, Thurnham is, uh, Thurnham Hall is now a hotel. Um, but that is this nice 1930s East End, I mean, uh, you don't get much better than that for the period. 
So there we have it, Glass and Dock, Christchurch. Very simple building, very typical of these industrial, and it's a small scale, it, as it were, industrial building because it's this dockyard, of course, they'd be building wooden ships originally um, moving, and it's never very big, it'd be coasting vessels only. But it's a, it's a lovely little building, and it's still very much open, very much used, and very much as a building that you, uh, you can admire. So thank you for watching, and may God bless you and keep you until next time.